Every Ethereum transaction you have ever made is forever public. Your wallet balance, your trading history, everything. And that's not even the biggest problem. Bitcoin can't run smart contracts, while Ethereum can't do privacy. My name is Idris Solubisi, developer educator at Midnight Foundation. For the past couple of months, I have been deep in trenches with developers trying to build private applications on blockchain. And I keep seeing the same frustration. They are forced to choose between two completely different ways blockchains work today, each with its own massive trade-offs. Today, I'm going to explain these models in a way that actually makes sense and show you why most blockchains force you into one corner and, of course, review how Midnight solved this by doing something nobody else thought was possible. Whether you are building DeFi protocol, enterprise application, or just curious how and why your crypto transaction are public, this is for you. Okay, let's start from the absolute beginning. When Satoshi created Bitcoin, they had to solve a fundamental problem. How do you track who owns what in a completely decentralized way? Think about the cash you have in your wallet right now. You don't have a balance. You have specific bills. Let's say a 20, two tenths, maybe a five. Each bill is discrete and independent. You can't tear a $20 bill in half to pay $10. You hand over the 20, get 10 back as change. Bitcoin works exactly like this. Every coin is like a digital bill without a specific value. To send someone three Bitcoin when you have a five Bitcoin bill, you destroy the five and create two new bills. Then three for them, two back to you as change. But then in 2015, Vitaly came along and said, this UTXO thing is too complicated for smart contracts. Let's do something different. Ethereum uses the account model. This is like your bank account. You have an address and the address has a balance. You want to send money, you subtract from your balance and add it to theirs. That's dead simple. Here is what it looks like in code. Don't worry about understanding it perfectly for now. So in this code, you see that the sender balance gets deducted and then the receiver balance gets added, the amount that was sent from the sender versus the Bitcoin model, which requires managing individual coins. Ethereum exploded because developers could actually build things without PhD level complexity. In Ethereum, every account has a nonce, which is a transaction counter that enforces ordering. But then this creates MEV opportunities because validators can see and reorder transactions in the mempool. And the global state tree, which is a Merkle Patricia tree used, must be updated atomically for every transaction, which requires sequential state updating and then limit parallelization. With that, we see different problems emerging, MEV, gas wars, privacy issues, but here is what nobody tells you about these models. Each one creates a massive problem that are almost impossible to fix. Let's take a look at each model and its problems. First, everything is sequential. Transaction must process in order, which creates bottlenecks. Secondly, zero privacy. Your entire financial history is tied to one address. Every balance, every transaction is forever public. I can see you have 50 ETH, 10,000 USDC, and that you bought a crypto punk last week. But then, using privacy solutions, they are banned aids on a fundamentally transparent system. Third, MEV. Bots can see your transaction before they are processed and they can sandwich attack you. This extracts billions from users annually. It's not a bug, it's an inevitable consequence of transparent and sequential processing. Let's talk about the UTXO problem. UTXOs aren't perfect either. Programming is genuinely difficult. If you want to build a DEX, good luck managing millions of individual coins instead of simple balance updates. In Ethereum, your smart contract has variables that persist. In UTXO used in Bitcoin, every transaction destroys the old state and creates a new state. But of course, try explaining that to a developer who just wants to build an app. It is very, very tough. So Midnight asked, what if we support both model where they work best? So two things to note here. At the ledger level, we use UTXOs for parallel and privacy. And then at the smart contract level, we use accounts for familiar programming. So that way, we didn't pick one or the other. We use both strategically. Here is what this looks like in code. 
you can see um, the code showing the ledger level, which is the UTSO model for parallel and private transaction. And also you can see the account model in smart contracts that is also used at the smart contract level. By the way, this is simplified for clarity. In the actual compact code, you would see things like export circuit instead of a simple function. That is what exactly tells the compact to generate zero knowledge proofs. You get Bitcoin's benefit at the base layer and Ethereum is in contract. At the ledger level, we implement UTXO with nullifier sets, not just marking output as spent, but also computing hash, which means that we can create unforgeable proof of consumption. In our compact contract, we maintain account style states using ledger fields that get updated atomically, but with zero knowledge circuit generating proofs of chain. This means that validators can verify ZK proof instead of re-executing transactions. Let me break down exactly how this works. The base blockchain layer uses UTXO just like Bitcoin. This gives us parallel processing and natural privacy. But our smart contracts written in Compact can use account patterns just like Ethereum. This gives us familiar programming and um, complex state management. The native token, Knight, that we use exists as this individual UTXO digital bill at the ledger level. But here is the magic. Knight token generates something called dust. Think of it like a renewable energy. You hold Knight and Knight generate dust and you use dust to pay for transactions. This solves gas price volatility. You always know your transaction costs. Now, for privacy, any UTSO can be shielded or unshielded. Shielded means the amount and the owner are hidden using zero knowledge proofs, while unshielded means transparent. You choose per transactions. On top of this, Compact, the midnight smart contract language, maintain a persistent state. In this contract, you use account model patterns like mapping, balances, complex state machine, all the Ethereum patterns you know today. But here is the clever part. Midnight uses the Kachina protocol where your private state never leaves your machine. The proof server generates a ZK snack locally, creating a succinct proof that is only kilobyte regardless of computation complexity. The nullifier set prevents double spends through set membership checks where the verification time even with millions of spent UTXOs. Let me show you why this matters with real example. Let's say you are building a healthcare payment system where patients pay providers, insurance handle claims, everything needs audit trail, but also privacy. In this case, using Ethereum means that payment is public forever, which leads to instant HIPAA violation. But also using Bitcoin, Bitcoin can't handle insurance logic, right? So to solve this problem, what exactly is the midnight approach? First, private patient payment with shielded UTXOs. Secondly, smart insurance processing with contracts. And then finally, compliant audit with viewing keys. That means one blockchain, both models, and the problem is completely solved. Again, this isn't just theoretical. We have partners that are already building on top of this. We have Dex is where other matching is transparent, but actual swap remains private. We have gaming platform where moves are hidden until reviewed. We also have supply chain system with private competitive data, but public verification. And finally, we have financial system that are compliant and private. None of these is possible when you are forced into one model. Look, this dual model architecture is generally the first approach that makes sense for real-world application. You shouldn't have to choose between privacy and functionality or between performance and programmability. But here is what gets even more interesting. Remember when I mentioned that Midnight can make transaction private or transparent? Next time, we are diving deep into shielded and unshielded tokens and how Midnight achieve true transaction privacy while keeping everything verifiable on the blockchain. And then I will show you how zero knowledge proof works without the PhD math, why privacy isn't just about information, but about giving users control. And most importantly, we will build something together.
If you are a developer like me, who is tired of every transaction being public on-chain, or if you ever wondered how to build compliant but private financial applications, then the next video is for you. You don't want to miss out. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't get to miss anything. Drop your questions below. We will respond to everything. If you are more interested in privacy tech or even the practical implementation, let me know in the comment section. If you want to start exploring right now, I will link the midnight documentation and some starter code in the description below. See you next time where we unlock the power of private transaction. Trust me, once you understand shielded and unshielded tokens, you will never look at blockchain privacy the same way again. Bye for now.